Okay guys, I'm doing something different for you right now, something completely different, I'm gonna do a sort of a new feature here, but this is the bedroom that I grew up in. From about the age of 12, 13, I had all my toys here in the mid 1980s. This here was my wardrobe, this was my toy cupboard, which is like some sort of time capsule right now. Half of it has pretty much been left as it was when I left this house, when I got my own place in 1996. A lot of these toys from the mid 80s. Some have been taken out, they're up in the loft. I might go up there and have a look as well in another video. Anyway, so I'm gonna open up the cupboard and have a look at one of my favorite toys, favorite all-time toys from the 80s. And I know it's in there because I've seen it there many times. It doesn't work anymore. This is not a review. This is basically a trip down memory lane. Okay, so there's a wardrobe in the way here, so this door doesn't open very well. And it's not completely left as I left it, but there is still a lot there. Um, so I'll do a new feature where I'm gonna go through, some of these toys are new, these ones are new for my children, but a lot of the other stuff around here have been left, and a lot of it is up in the loft, so I might do a bit where I go up in the loft as well. But there's one toy that I'm gonna talk about at the minute, which was quite possibly my favourite. Right up the top here. So the toy that I'm looking at, first of all, in this new series, from the 1980s and one of my favourites from my childhood and in my best Jeremy Clarkson voice, the Tamiya Hornet. Every child's dream from the 1980s. It was so quick, it could destroy your pocket money in a second. It may look like it's on its last legs. It's got terrible wheel wobble, but let's see it in its prime. So here it is, um, in all its glory. Well, I say glory. It's definitely seen better days, but this toy, I wanted this so bad, so bad. There were other ones at the time. People might remember the Grasshopper. The Grasshopper was a cheaper version, um, but I, for a long time, had my heart set on getting one of these. And um, my dad's got me this for Christmas, must, uh, these were released in 1984, so it would have been shortly after that, maybe the year or two after that, that I got one of these for Christmas. He spent quite a while building two of these after work in the evenings because my brother also got one as well. So Christmas Day, we woke up and we had one of these each, and I was so pleased. It, it's the, it was definitely the better model at the time, the, the Grasshopper was the cheapest radio control car of this sort of uh, style at that time, um, and the Hornet was the next one up. They weren't cheap, and they have, uh, Tamiya have started selling these again. Um, they go for about £100, 90 to £100 now. If I remember, it cost more than that back in the 1980s, and I was over the moon to get this. It would run at about 30 miles an hour. It's battery operated. You had a chargeable battery which went in the bottom section there. It's absolutely battered. I literally have no idea what's happened there. I've obviously put some tape on at some point uh, to fix something there. The, the tyres are well worn. These used to be very spiky, which was one of the attractions of the Hornet for me. Um, the off-road tyres there, uh, these sort of spikes went all around it, they're well worn. This was a two-wheel drive uh, vehicle, powered at the back here, and um, with full suspension. I'll show you the suspension there. So there's the front, and there's the back. And there's your little man in the front there. 
this, if I remember, I think you took these clips out here and this whole top came off. And you can sit it to see inside. I won't do that now. But I absolutely love this. And I remember they were very, very durable. I used to knock these about big time. There's pieces of it falling off right now, actually. Bits of plastic coming from somewhere. Um, I remember having a head-on collision with my brother. His hornet and my hornet smacked into each other. Snapped one of these off, one of them. But then all you had to do, you can, it was at the time it was quite easy to get spares, so you just get another one of those and stick it on. But yeah, these this this was fantastic toy for me at the time. That was straight up. I don't know what's happened to that. That would stand straight up. And you'd had a control unit, obviously. And I have no idea that where that what where that has gone. Let's have a look inside the battery compartment. Oh, the battery's still in there. Blimey. Something else falling out. So that's the battery. That still actually looks in good condition. That has probably been sat in there for the best part of 30 years. And this used to, used to take that, unclip that there where the white clip is, and then there was a charging unit. Um, and then you'd get about, if I remember, you used to get about 15 minutes of playtime with this. And then you'd have to go and charge it. I didn't have more than one of these. Uh, they, they were fairly expensive, if I remember. But that's quite interesting that it's still in there. And hasn't leaked or done anything. Well, there's a lot of pieces dropping off this. I don't know what these bits of plastic... It's dropping off. I'll put the battery back in. The size of that battery though, compared when you think of mobile phones these days. The size of that battery. But these were lightweight radio control. They were advertised as being lightweight, um, a low centre of gravity, um, which was what they were advertising at the time. Uh, you basically had to build them from scratch. And I used to love the little anytime baby on the back there and all the little advertising. But yeah, fantastic toy. Was over the moon with this. Had lots of, oh look, it's actually broken on there as well. Had lots of joy with it, but it's a little crack there on the, must have hit something. But I used to race it up and down the, the road outside here. Um, just fly off the curbs um, and just race it around at about 30 miles an hour. Um, you're not going to, I don't think you're going to get much quicker than that with um, battery operated cars. Obviously, a lot of the petrol ones go quicker, but at the time for a 12 year old, it was like I had an actual car um, and I was well chuffed with this. So that's really cool. I like it. It's a shame that it's in such a state, but then if it wasn't, I wouldn't have uh, got the enjoyment that I got out of it. So that's brilliant. I'm gonna have to clear, oh, look at this mess. It's fallen out of it. Look at all that. I'm gonna have to clean all that up now. Okay, so I've cleaned up all that mess. What it was, I think, because it's so old, it was bits of the plastic dropping off there. Um, not quite sure why bits have dropped off there as well, but um, but there it is. Got a bit section here that's been on since I've had it. Do not touch that. That used to get quite hot if I remember. Have a look inside there. There you go. Hornet racing scene. And that looks like a very old piece of sellotape. I don't know what I was thinking there. When in, when in doubt, sellotape it. And you can see the, the movement of the suspension. So it used to be able to go over quite decent jumps and ramps, homemade ramps. And like I said, curbs or anything. Brilliant stuff. 
don't know much about the actual workings of it. All I know is I had massive amounts of fun with that as a child. And that was one of my favourite toys. I had hours and hours of fun with that. Um, I don't know if kids these days particularly play with radio control cars. You don't seem to see them anymore. But this brought back loads of memories for me. This, these were a step up from the uh, sort of cheaper plastic ones that you used to find in Woolworths, the real toys. People used to race these. Um, so this was more of a hobby style uh, radio control car as well um, as a toy. I know it was quite expensive at the time. I've um, been trying to think roughly what price it was and 150 pounds comes to, to mind back in the mid 80s. I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I'm pretty sure I heard that figure at the, around that time. It was a lot of money and I absolutely loved it. I can't tell you how much fun and enjoyment I got out of this radio control car. I'd quite like one now. I know they sell them now, 89.99. I've just found one online for. Um, they're supposed to be exactly the same model. You have to build them from scratch. It comes in a box completely dismantled. You build the gearbox, you build the whole lot. I don't know if I can be bothered to do, to do that, to be honest. Um, but what an amazing thing to have again. But um, anyway, so I just thought I'd talk about one of my favourite toys there. And maybe I've brought back some memories there for some people watching these videos. It certainly brought back memories for me. I used to race it around car parks, used to race it around with my brother, have races, roll it, jump it, whatever. Um, but I'll finish up, I'll show you some more footage of the Hornet in action. Thanks for watching. <laughs> for watching i enjoyed that trip down memory lane check out dave the robo 5's channel the footage of the radio control cars was taken from his channel brilliant channel that all about radio control cars my subscribe button is on screen right now please hit that subscribe button thank you